This is Business History. Today, we will talk about the Philippine economy and the business landscape under the leadership of the late President Fidel V. Ramos, who died last July 31 at the age of 94. Rest in peace, sir. Ramos was a military man who eventually helped oust a dictator and left a complicated legacy in the Philippine economy. When he won the presidency in 1992, he was credited with steering the economy into a period of rapid growth. He was able to do so with Philippines 2000, his socio-economic program which aimed to industrialize the country by, yes, you guessed it, the year 2000. Part of his goal was breaking up monopolies, the most famous one being PLDT. Under his term, new teleco firms entered the market and PLDT found a new rival. That is, of course, Globe, which started operations in 1994. Ramos also opened up the Philippines to more foreign investors and allowed more foreign banks to set up shop here. Ramos faced a power and water crisis. His solution was to privatize these services. So from MWSS, private companies Manila Water and Manila took over water and wastewater services in Metro Manila. Power plants were also privatized during his term. Ramos also deregulated the downstream oil industry, which eventually allowed oil companies to set prices for their products and open the oil industry to new refiners and distributors. Ramos also paved the way for the private sector to develop 240 hectares of Fort Bonifacio. We now know this as the Bonifacio Global City, which is now a major financial center in Metro Manila. Ramos also used the money from the sale of the land to modernize the military. Economists say that Ramos's measures helped the Philippines recover from the Asian financial crisis in 1997. But activist groups up to this day view the late president's liberalization efforts like oil deregulation as anti-poor and made the Philippines vulnerable to pressures from the West. So what do you think of Ramos's economic policies? Let us know in the comments.